Hey everybody, today I come to you from the base of Pikes Peak. It's off in the distance over here. You can see it over my shoulder. Uh, we're basically pretty much right in central Colorado. Now, have you ever thought what it would have been like to step back into time and at a place where this was completely surrounded by volcanoes and you had lush tropical redwood forests all around you? Well, we're going to take you to a place right down the road here where you're going to be able to see what that would have been like back during the time where all of this, instead of being covered with pine trees, would have been covered with redwood forest. So let's go on down the road and see what we can see. Uh, it's just a short ways, so come on along for the adventure. During the 1870s, geologists of the Hayden Survey mapped and studied this area. They described and documented fossilized plants, animals, and insects. Due to the interest in the well-documented fossils, the rock layers were formally named the fluorescent lake beds in 1894. Collecting samples from the area was so common that by the late 1800s, the petrified forest had been greatly diminished due to collectors removing large amounts of petrified wood. It wasn't until 1969 when the fossils were finally protected by the establishment of the Fluorescent Fossil Bed National Monument. Today the park receives approximately 60,000 visitors a year and is a site of paleontological research with the rock layers being renamed the Fluorescent Formation in 2001. Let's check out the visitor center before we hike and explore the valley, shall we? About 34 million years ago, give or take a few years, much of what you are about to see was covered by an ancient lake. Geologists now call this the fluorescent formation. The climate was considerably warmer during this time period with forests of giant redwood trees lining the lake. Millions of insects were buzzing about, fish were abundant in the lake, and massive ash clouds were being produced by distant erupting volcanoes. It was the combination of volcanic ash mixing with the layers of clay and mud in the bottom of the lake that preserved the fossils we see today, including the petrified wood from the giant redwood trees. The fossilized insects found in the ash clay layers are numerous, with mayflies, dragonflies, grasshoppers, crickets, cockroaches, termites, earwigs, beetles, wasps, moths, bees, ants, a large variety of spiders, as well as other insects having all been preserved at fluorescent. Beetles and snails are the most diverse and abundant fossils found. The star of the show here at Florissant is the well-preserved petrified forest of giant redwood and hardwood trees. The trail immediately begins outside the visitor center and loops you through a tropical walk dating back 34 million years. Preservation is so good, you can see the growth rings on these ancient trees. Here is a perfect example of how one tree can produce multiple trees from one parent trunk. In this case, three trees have been preserved growing out of one main redwood stump. These trees would have resembled the modern redwood trees of the coastal redwood forest of the United States. There is another unique fossilized tree up the trail. The main trail we are following from the visitor center is the Petrified Forest Loop Trail. I would recommend this trail due to the sheer numbers of petrified trees you can see in a short amount of time. The trail leads us to a fossilized tree with a very modern pine growing right out of the middle of the ancient remains. Notice how the modern roots split the ancient stump this is a natural physical process known as root wedging. When the tree's roots grow into the cracks of the ancient stump, they cause the rock to break apart and the fossilized trunk is slowly converted to soil. The 
The Petrified Forest Loop Trail showcases at least 30 preserved stumps. They are among the largest petrified stumps in the world and rival Specimen Ridge in Yellowstone National Park. Although, Specimen Ridge is much more difficult to access. Here at Florissant, these trees could have been as tall as 200 feet with estimated ages ranging from 500 to 700 years old. We're coming up on a highlight of the Loop Trail, the Big Stump. The stump is the remains of a 230 foot tall, 500 to 1000 year old redwood tree buried in volcanic mud flows. In the 1800s, the stump was excavated by local residents and a fee was charged to view the stump. There was an attempt made to saw the stump into pieces to be displayed at the World's Fair in 1893, but the attempt failed and the saw blades were left in place. The fossil beds also contain fossilized leaves, pollen, fruit, seeds, and flowers. Most of the leaves come from trees and shrubs with cones and needles coming from the redwoods. However, the fossilized cones are smaller than the modern examples from California. The fossilized pollen represents over 130 different species originating from the varied habitats located around the lake 34 million years ago. The most viewed stump is one purchased by Walt Disney before the monument's creation and located at Disneyland. And the largest stump is this one, depending on how you measure it. The Geologic Trail is a short 0.6 mile mostly uphill climb leading to a spectacular view of the overall area. Signage along the way explains the geological history and transports you back in time 34 million years ago. It is like you were standing on the shores of the ancient lake under the shade of a giant redwood feeling the rumblings of a distant volcano. The trail crosses the meadow of Grape Creek and across the bridge before climbing to the overlook. Thirty to thirty-five million years ago, give or take a few years, volcanic eruptions from stratovolcanoes similar to modern-day Mount St. Helens occurred southwest of the Florissant area. This region, known as the Guffey Volcanic Center, produced ash, lava flows, and other volcanic debris that created the perfect conditions for the preservation and fossilization of the plants and animals living in the Florissant area. Ash from these events buried the landscape and boiling mud flows choked the valleys. Most of the fossil bearing layers in the Florissant formation were formed in an ancient valley after one of these mud flows dammed it up creating a lake as big as 14 square miles. Eventually the volcanoes became dormant, then extinct, and eroded away. Within the lake itself, volcanic materials were frequently deposited, creating stress on the plants and animals living in and near the lake, which caused huge die-offs. As the plants and animals died, they accumulated as thick layers of organic material on the muddy bottom of the ash-rich lake. It is within these ash mud layers the best preserved fossils can be found. Based on evidence from these fossil-rich shale layers, it is estimated the lake may have existed up to 5,000 years. I guess Kilroy was here too. If you know, you know. Our final stop of the day takes us to the Adeline Hornbeck Homestead. Fifteen years after the Homestead Act was passed in the United States, the Florissant Valley was surveyed. The survey was approved by the U.S. government's land office in Denver in 1878. With that, the Florissant Valley was opened to settlement under the terms of the Homestead Act. Just weeks after the survey became official, the first homestead claim in the area was filed by a pioneer woman named Adeline Hornbeck. With the help of her neighbors, she built a two-story log house with five rooms, including a parlor for entertaining. She established a ranch to the west of Pikes Peak, and along with the neighbor, established the first local school. The log house is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is a great example of an early Colorado homestead. The property includes a number of outbuildings which were relocated to the site.
all the buildings are locked, so let's take a peek inside this one through one of the windows. Looks like this one stores the 1800s version of an SUV. Did you notice you can still see the axe marks left on the logs as the buildings were being constructed? There's another window on the back of the main home. Let's take a look and see what we can see. It's a well-stocked 1800s kitchen with the water pump located inside the building. No frozen pipes here. homestead had all the modern amenities, including a root cellar, the 1870s method of keeping your food safe, fresh, and cool. Thanks everybody for coming along on our little adventure today at the base of Pikes Peak here at Florissant, Colorado, uh, taking a look at Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument. Now make sure in the comments, make sure that you let us know what you thought was the best thing you saw today. What did you think? What was your favorite thing that you saw today at Flor Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument? I like the hiking. You like the hiking? I like the hiking and what the pine trees. What about the big stump? Big stumps were cool too. Big stumps were pretty cool. Yep. Back in the day, those big stumps would have been uh, really incredibly huge redwoods. That would have been pretty spectacular to see. Yeah, it would have been cool. Well, and the volcanoes would have been pretty spectacular too. All right, well, make sure in the comments you let us know what you thought was the best thing that you saw today uh, in Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument. We read all the comments, we respond to all the comments. So make sure you leave us a comment also Make, make sure you like and subscribe, hit the big thumbs up and the notification button for us. You don't want to miss any future videos from The Rock Doctor. So just remember, until next time, don't take a trip. Let the trip take you. We'll be seeing you on Down the Road. That's gonna look good in the video.